In this episode, I'm speaking with Steve Dugan, a very talented and prolific artist and a commercial illustrator, originally from Glasgow, but living and working in Ireland for the last uh, many years. So we'll just chat about what he's been up to and uh, how life's been treating him in these uh, peculiar times. Have you found a, have you found a nice perch at home? What's your kind of a daily routine now at the moment? I'm kind of just around the kids all the time. Yeah, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a, like, I make that sound like a negative. Maybe does that sound like a negative? I mean, obviously, it is really enjoyable. I mean, I do I do enjoy it um, around the missus as well. Yeah, it's okay. You know, I'm I'm in a routine. I don't do a lot of me time except after like nine o'clock. Do people yeah. say me time? <laughs> Yeah, and, and and for ages I wasn't doing any art or anything. You know, I've not. I would rather do music. Uh, you know, strum the guitar and make up a tune than Very good. you know. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I got back into a bit of noodling and and playing my tinfoil and stuff lately. You know, it's good. It's nice, doesn't it? Uh, I think lots of people have kind of uh, re rediscovered hobbies and little things they wanted to do. Definitely. So, well, yeah, just pick up an instrument, and just have a little noodle, and you're kind of a. Uh, I don't know. You feel less scrutinised with time or something. You just kind of a. Uh, Kind of yeah, going for stuff. Well, I've got loads and loads. I probably mentioned to you, I've got loads and loads of uh, bits of music, um, which I would never be looking at that as like, oh right, I'm going to be a performer. But it's just like it's a brilliant hobby where you get a tune in your head and you stick it down on one of the little apps you can use. You know, little yeah, loopy. Yeah. Uh, very rarely Garage Band. I find I, I make rubbish things in Garage Band because there's too many instruments that I could. Oh, maybe this would sound good be a piano, and it slows it all down. So I just record sketches. It's a kind and of like a kind of doing it all vocally. Yeah, well, no, I'd play guitar and, yeah. and go along with that, you know. Yeah. And and some, sometimes it seems like really, really, really good, you know. Yeah. But there's always this thing of finishing, you know. There's a real failure to finish things, um, which I need to work on, you know. So these are almost uh, like just musical sketches, really. Like how long in duration yeah. would they be? Just a couple of, couple of seconds or would they be? No, no, it's, it's sometimes I've got like 70% of a song. Yeah. Um, or, or more than that, and then I'll stick down some lyrics because I, I, I've often been very, very shy of writing lyrics. Yeah. I used to write songs in the old days and I'd be too sardonic, do you know what I mean? Too jokey in the yeah, lyrics yeah. because I couldn't write anything sincere and I've still got a problem with being sincere. It's a funny thing, uh, I think I do with myself, you kind of uh, veer towards humour almost, maybe it's a confidence yeah. thing, you don't feel uh, worthy to write a proper, is it, can you kind of feel like you're exposing yourself? It's a nice defence mechanism, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's a slanting thing sometimes if you want to. And there's also, I mean, a lot of songs, if you come from a tradition of pop songs, all the songs are about love and romance and baby, I love you. Yeah. And uh, I remember the, the last time when I was in my 20s, I was involved in a relationship. Um, but prior to the relationship, I used to write loads of songs all about my experiences with relationships and women. Yeah. The minute I get into a relationship, I stopped writing songs because it was all private stuff between me and her that I'd be writing about. So I think being in a relationship stops you writing about love and romance because it's more real. You know, it's less in the I past. Get you, yeah, you're kind of a, you're actually yeah, active in it. It's your diary. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you, but, but a lot of people go over that by writing about, you know, just writing from a point of view of a character or something, you know, which I don't really do. But that would be handy. I heard a good, I saw a good uh, documentary on Netflix, uh, John Mellencamp, right? Oh, yeah. And he said, basically, which I thought was really good advice for anyone, said that basically he's written maybe 300 plus songs. Mm. And he said, nobody wants to hear 300 songs about me. So he said, just be right. a good listener, be a good people watcher, be a good observer. Yes. Read the newspapers, like, yeah, put yourself in the other uh, shoes. So that's yes. a, kind of a nice yeah. little thing. It doesn't have to be all yourself. Or, yeah, so I think that's an and interesting. It, yeah, that really lifts the weight, doesn't it? You it, know, it when does. you go... You kind of can distance yourself from whatever you're doing. Yeah, it's, these aren't my opinions. You know, right. this is just like a character, yeah. So that's it. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll try that, yeah, but... Um, no, I just like to tie a few songs up. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting that you're kind of going the music route now, because I remember you uh, saw some of your work, say, uh, just after college and all that. You do yeah. very much um, a humorous sort of stunt video kind of a slant. It was almost performance yeah. as opposed to illustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I got bored with illustration. I the old days of... of, of see, there was this... Um, okay, the short story is that... Uh, and I, I remember I, I told this story at Offset and then everything becomes, your life seems to be all about this one little story you keep telling. Um, I was in a big long-term relationship and then it was over. Mm -hmm. And I was in my last year of college and I just went, Bleh! and I'd always admired ideas more than, you know, images. Yeah. I, liked, I liked really good concepts. As opposed and to I was execution a big fan of, almost, yeah. What was that? Even more so than the execution of it, like just the, the notion itself. 
Well, I, I just, I really, um, it was a, it was about kind, it was about, uh, it had an emotional dimension because I was, I was interested in fear and what a big scaredy cat I was myself and how afraid of authority and afraid of um, doing anything a bit strange, mm. even though I would be an extrovert at times. Yeah, yeah. I kind of realized that um, I admired uh, pranks and performances and performance art that, that really kind of exposed the person a lot more. And that would be like a criterion for making good work, like how much you revealed yourself. That kind of goes back to the songwriting thing. It seems to you know, echo that. But this was like, um, what am I saying? Yeah, I just kind of wanted to do stuff that seemed out of the ordinary, you know, uh, and, and, and poetic and, and different. And, and there's so many different things you could do that weren't within a fine art background. They weren't in a gallery context. It was all about, you could just take, your environment, you know, uh, walking down the street, all, all the signage. I mean, I, I worked in advertising a long time and I developed a real kind of kind of uh, uh, antipathy towards advertising because, as we all know, as people at Banksy say, you know, advertising is this kind of unwanted intrusion upon our space. Yeah. So I, I, I like the idea of pushing back against that and putting up your own, your own little signs or changing signs and, and just doing performances in the street. It's a very long-winded uh, explanation of some of the stuff I did, you know. But it's, um, it's this idea that you've, you've got a lot more power than you think you do. That's it. To behave and to, to push the certain buttons that are all, all around you, you know. And how did you feel when you were doing those performances? Did you almost, uh, did you get nervous? Like, did you, did you get that nice little uh, butterflies in the stomach when you were actually doing some oh, of the stunts? Or were you... Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, to take one example, there was a thing I did called The Lucky Guy. And this was, um, I used to travel the underground in Glasgow. That's a wee subway train that goes around the yeah. city. And, uh, you know, this is before mobile phones and people used to just avoid each other. And they'd be looking at these adverts above. Now, I know that people have done things with trains before, you know, but, um, I, you know, it's, it's a good format and I thought I'd use it. So I, I pretended to be this character who was hired by the train company to, to give out prizes to anyone that would say hello to him, right? So I put, I, put, I put up my own sign, uh, custom yeah. made, and it said, you know, um, say hello to the lucky guy, big orange letters. Picture of me in the days when I had, you know, hair and a suit and I'd be yeah. doing this kind of crap. Yeah. And that was next to it. And it's, if you say hello to this guy, he'll give you a fabulous mystery prize. So it was basically a really kind of dumb, stupid setup, you know, like a corny setup. Um, Did you go full was the ball in the... Yeah, it was cheese ball and it was undignified. It was really important that I, I didn't look good. I looked like a bit of a, a prat, you know. Um, and also the, the act of, you know, uh, what's the word? Commandeering, um, grabbing somebody else's sign. Yeah. Um, requisitioning someone else's sign. And that's again, that's like, oh, breaking the law. Ooh, you know, th things that I'd be a bit worried about. Like, I didn't want any trouble with the authorities, you know. So, but as I made a video of it and uh, there's me putting the sign up on the, on the underground. And then I sat down looking exactly like I did in the photograph yeah. with a, a briefcase full of lucky bags. Remember lucky bags? Yeah, yeah. And like pl plastic guns and like crap like that. And anyone that said hello to me, I would, uh, I'd, I'd give them a wee lucky bag and, you know, have a wee chat with them. Um, I was, I was bricking it. I was really, you know, crap myself. I'd imagine uh, that's a similar sort of a buzz some people must get from shoplifting, that kind of yeah. doing something weird, you know what I mean? I think that's probably... Yeah. Oh, totally, yeah. Have you yeah. done any shoplifting, by the way? Let's, not recently, let's not no, not because of, with lockdown and all that, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> been a while. I, I remember, I remember doing, doing a bit of mild shoplifting back in my early 20s when I was really, really poor. Yeah. I'd gone to a, a second-hand bookshop, which is terrible because it's an amazing bookshop, and I was always... Uh, well, I had this trench coat that had like holes in the pockets. So when my hands were inside it, they were kind of free, you know what yeah. I mean? So they were, and I'm standing, there, just, yeah, I'm standing there on a bookshelf kind of going, you know, <laughs> doing this kind of thing, really like moronic. But um, and other, other times I've just, like, you know, shoplift cheese or something. And you imagine yeah. the consequences of- Or you be creative when you're weighing your veg, that kind of thing. No, I haven't done that now, Jerry. That's, that's just that wrong. A real, a real college trick. I'm disgusted by that. <laughs> Yeah, no shoplifting lately. Nope. But yeah, the, the, the sense of being scared is really important, I think, you know, because a lot of the stuff that people make is they're not putting themselves on the line at all. And yeah. I always admire folk who yeah. stand to lose something by doing this thing. That's you know? it. There's a, it's, a, it's an energy. Fear. Sometimes uh, some people would say it, it's a sign you're kind of maybe heading towards the right direction if you're putting yourself in situations where you're feeling not. I think so. It's kind of a, I don't really think there's yes. something in that. Yeah, because... 
it, it, uh, you, you know, anything where you can end up looking a bit of an arse has got to be good because I think yeah. so much of what we do is to make ourselves look good. Mm. It's to get some kind of, what is it, social capital or approval or yeah. reinforcement of our talents, you know. This is more like, it's more generous than that, I think. Yeah. You know, let somebody else see you in a vulnerable position is, is much more, it's better art, if you want to use that word. Yeah, know? I love that little phrase, and I think it's true, like, you, uh, what was it? You wouldn't care as much about what people think when you realise how little they do think about you. Like, no one, people are, and, and, and people are very forgiving to any, anyone's public fuck-up as well. So it was kind of a, people put too much scrutiny on themselves, I think. There's a little bit of a... Totally agree, yeah. P people timid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. Um, I don't know if you're aware of one. Well, I, I don't know if you get aware of any of the stuff I've done so much. But um, one of the very first things I did was because uh, I used to read this book called The Dice Man um, by Luke Reinhardt, and it kind of changed my life. It was. Um, it's a mechanism whereby you you allow the roll of a dice to make your choices for you. Oh, I mean, you that set out the choice. Yeah, that was a TV show, wasn't it? I don't was know. It? If it, was that a TV show? I don't know. Oh. They still haven't managed to make a film out of it, as far yeah. as I know. Excuse me. But anyway, cutting to the chase was I was walking down the road in Glasgow one time before I'd done anything at all. And I was preoccupied with that idea of like caring too much about what other people thought. And there was a coin in my pocket and I just had the thought, right, OK, um, when you take this coin out of your pocket, if it's heads, you're, you're free. You don't have to do anything. But if it's tails, though, mm. you're going to have to put on a big stupid smile, a kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, grin at everyone, you know, and that was scary enough for me because that was breaking out of the, the character that I developed mm. for myself, you know. Yeah. So I did that, and I'm walking, you know, it comes up tails, and I'm doing the kind of, in a really false, really plastic smile. Yeah. yeah. Know, terrifying, probably. And and people caught my eye and looked away, and you know, they didn't they didn't care. They, they were just like, oh, okay, I'm a bit of a nutter. And at the end of that, like a hundred yards of that, you're you're kind of like what was that? I, I did that. That was, you know, that might seem stupid and inane to a lot of people like, come on, get a job, grow up or something. But it's all about breaking out that. So the next thing I did was, all right, then if it comes up now, Tails, I'm going to do an Igor club walk down the street. Oh, yeah. much further this time. And then it came up Tails and I did that. And, and I was walking past people and I don't think I tried to catch their eye as much. Do you know what I mean? Because I was going... This is maybe a bad idea, but I was realizing, you know, but by the time I finished it, I just felt really, I felt, I felt different. I felt like I'd done something important. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And it was just to kind of, just, just to come to the realization that nobody gives a shit. And, and that you know, they don't. That's a nice thing to. They don't. And they can handle it if you're doing something strange. They just, yeah. they put you in a little box as, he's a bit of a dafty. He's, 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 he's either pretentious or he's deluded, or he's sick, or something. But they yeah. don't really care, and it doesn't affect you, and you get more freedom to act in different ways, you know? And I think a lot of us keep ourselves in little boxes. Was this when you were, were in, a, in college? Or was this... Yeah, so I was still in college, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of a like practice for... You for went to, to Glasgow? Yeah. yeah, I yeah. had Glasgow School of Art, yeah, yeah. yeah. How was so, that? How was the... Do you remember it fondly? Because I remember my... Oh, yeah. Oh, my I God, remember. yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, I was lucky. I was a mature student um, when I went back. Yeah. I was twenty-eight, and I'd gone once when I was seventeen, yeah. and I was too too naive. I did. I wasn't really a person yet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I had no uh, centre to me. I was just like, mm, what? and you know, I was smoking stuff, and I was eating lots of curry, and yeah. And they were right to throw me out because I, I was not visual at all. I was totally about concepts. So I spent ten years going, "Oh no, I wish what I was did you back do in for Arsenal." Those ten years. Between um, when you go back to college, uh, well, I got involved in Buddhism and stuff, and I was yeah. I, 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 a couple of years. I've been in a Buddhist community, working as a gardener, meditating with a bunch of guys in the same oh, house, yeah. and then I got out. Yeah, yeah, I got involved in drama then, because I saw Fame, I saw the film Fame, and oh, I'm okay. that shallow. Yeah. yeah, I was like. <gasps> This looks amazing. So, who, did, who did you relate to in fame? Everybody had someone they kind of did you jump off the couch? Remember the old TV show? Did you jump off the couch synchronized with the uh, I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I, I don't think I related to anyone particular. Yeah, um, where did, just, you do well, that? where did you do hmm? the uh, dra or actually go back to the Buddhism? How long did you spend with that? Oh, a total of about three years, I think. Really, and then the, then so I, I got thrown out of art school, I was on the dole for a while, and I joined Buddhist communities, and they threw me out of that as well. What happened there? I was too young and disruptive again. I was yeah. like, ah, you know, yeah. 
every chance I got, I was off down my friend's house to to drink beer and play guitar, and yeah, yeah. and then I'd arrive hung over the next day. And so just your, in the your heart wasn't in it. No, they were just. I mean, I, I wanted. I, I found that Buddhist environment full of young idealists who they'd never been with anyone. Yeah, you know, romantically, and they were trying to sublimate that and get it out of their systems without doing it. And I was a big fan of things like Jack Kerouac mm. and um, Rocky Horror Picture Show, yeah. things that were all about vitality and, and life and enthusiasm, yeah. right? And I believed in that more. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm. T by the time I was through, I was like 21. Yeah. And I was like, I, I, I want to meet women, you know. And how did you fall into it? I walked down the street one day. I saw a, a meditation poster. Yeah. Uh, from another sect, a guy called Sri Chinmoy. Yeah. And uh, I went to his meditation class. One of his disciples and I, I kind of got into it meditation's amazing but you, it's very hard still to make active in that? would you still do that no. on a daily basis or would you have? no no hell no no i find meditation really hard to do because even though when you do it for 10 minutes you feel different you feel good yeah it's one of those weird things that there's such a resistance to even sitting down and going just being bored for 10 minutes you know yeah. um yeah it's 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 really interesting the way that you'll avoid just being quiet for a minute I sound like I'm coming across as some hyperactive goon here, but no, but you're right. I'm I can so be now, quiet. More so hmm? now with phones and screens, it's very hard just to give yourself two seconds. You're kind of uh, reaching for us, oh. just scrolling like a like a muppet constantly. You know what I mean? It's, it's quite a totally, yeah. so many distractions. It really is. Yeah, T totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you fell in. Then you fell into drama. Was this? Uh, what did you do? Simply. I, sorry. Did you do any formal training or was it a class or was it no, a, or was it a no, um, no, again, more amateur nonsense, you know. Um, I got a job as a drama worker in a place called Mary Hill in Glasgow and I met loads of other excitable young people and um, I, I realised I was a terrible actor. I did a bit of acting, but I can't act for shit. Like, I, I mumble and I kind of slur my way. Mm. And I'd, I'd be given a big, um, a big huge passage of, uh, of a monologue to do and mm. I would just see grey and I would go blah, 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 with no, I didn't make it my own. I had no training at all and I was a bit shit. But you just kind of, you know, it's just as you'd imagine, you're at home with a paper bag going and you'd underline the lines that you've got. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, it was fun. You know, the amateur drama scene is like a lot of fun. And you get the last night party and it's amazing and everyone, yeah, yeah. everyone falls in love with each other and it's all kind of exciting, you know. That's funny then that stood to you when you actually did uh, revisit college those years later. Yeah. Well, that thing about being a mature student is really kind of important because when I went back to college, I was like a sponge ready to suck up all the stuff. Because, yeah. see, because I'd gone to college when I was 17, I got to see a whole generation of my pals graduate in fine arts. And yeah. they, they were living off bursaries and just living off kind of government handouts, which I was doing all through my 20s. And I thought, yeah. if I'm going to go back to college, I'm going to do something that will make me money, right? So I thought I want to be an illustrator, even though I didn't have much clue about it. I'd seen a few illustrators like Brad Holland and Marshall Larisman, and they blew my mind. But that was illustration as a kind of critical thing. It was quite dark, even yeah. quite masculine. You know, I think we could have a whole conversation there about types of illustration. Um, there's quite angry illustration. It's like Ralph Steadman, and it's all about yeah. negative emotions. But kind now of political slant. When yeah. did you first say when you were a kid? Right? Was there anyone yeah. in your family? parents wise who had a flair for art like when was your when did you first realize you had a talent um when probably when i started to you know, like i drew a horse or something like that and it was 10 percent better than somebody else's yeah and then suddenly you've got people gathered around you going oh that's a good horse mm. and you're like is it because what's important to remember is i'm from a family of a lot of children and this is classic this is a classic um pop psychology but i'm number four of nine children Really? No, and, geez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're like that kind of like lost, in, I mean, it's a brilliant family. I love them to bits. Yeah. But you try and find something that makes you more special. I mean, I know that in retrospect, I think. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah. But yeah. you're kind of going, I, I, I want to be different. I want to be, you know, I want to be seen, you know. So yeah. it's when you find something like art, there's a weird kind of culture in, in, in most schools that still persists, I think, where the teacher has got a wrong idea that, there only has to be one or two really good artists in the class, mm. and the rest of you, maybe you're not cut out for this. That's right. It's insane. Be the numbers, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a few little uh, clever clogs get nominated, and that's them off for life. You know. That's it. Um, yeah. 
And it's got nothing to do with being a poetic soul, uh, you know, or being uh, more perceptive than anyone else. It's, it's been good at drawing, yeah. which is like, which is like someone having good handwriting and being told that you should be a poet. You know, it's just such an odd uh, assumption to make, you know. Do you, are you keeping sketchbooks at the moment or what's your uh, routine? I know you said you're doing more music and different stuff at the moment, but would you be uh, diligent enough when it comes to keeping the, the hand and the pen moving? Do you know what I mean? Do you? Nope. No. Nope. Do you give <laughs> as much time to your craft as you used to, perhaps? Or is it just... Um, no, the, the, look, the way that I work is... Um, I, w what I wish I had more of is persistence, right? Um, a lot of what happens with me is I'm a brilliant starter and a bad finisher. Mm. And I will become like totally consumed with you know, enthusiasm for, for some new technique. Yeah, yeah. Like I can show you some of the foil stuff I've made in the last two days, right? Um, do you want to see it? I'd love to, yeah. Do you have, do you have it to hand? Foil art. Can't tell you anything about the process because trade secret. Can you see that? That's class. Yeah, around. that's brilliant. I'll that try and, yeah, okay. So it's kind of like, you know, and that's just messed about with foil. That's really cool. Do you have any more? And you get this odd thing. Oh, that's, that, that's amazing. But I mean, like that is just doodling all over foil and, and last but, last and least, is this boy here. That, that, that is, that, that's amazing. But it's kind of like just like, you know, doodling. Yeah. And covering a surface. Uh, so I want it to be a lot more interesting than that. I mean. It suggests a lot like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bronze Age artifacts or, yeah. you know, Celtic stuff or Mexican stuff. And that's good, you know, but I want to, you know, I like Grayson Perry, the way that he'll take a, a thing and he'll put a much more contemporary oh, yeah. vernacular. Yeah. Spin yeah, on he's it, fantastic. You know? Did you see his exhibition? his exhibition was uh, two years ago with the uh, tapestries? Yes. It was fan amazing. Fantastic. Isn't he? Isn't he yeah, yeah, yeah. He's something special, isn't he? He really is. He's, he's just these a good phases human being. Yeah. yeah, a very well, perceptive. Like, it's yeah. documentary, and he kind of the questions he asks. He really gets under people's fingernails. You know what I mean? He can really yeah get yeah. to the core of stuff. It's very very interesting to. What do you yeah. what do you do at the moment? I know everything's locked down, but say when the going is good again, what do you usually do to keep yourself uh, inspired? What kind of uh, things outside your own drawing and illustration do you like uh, have have an interest in to kind of um, cycling? Really? Cycling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to cycle every second day. I've been doing that for the last week and a half. And I've, uh, I'm on, you know, like a lot of middle aged men. I'm on Strava. And yeah. uh, I've set myself some targets. Like this month, I've got to cycle 1,250 miles, uh, kilometers. Wow. Where are you um, going to go? Uh, you Phoenix anywhere, Park. Do you, have any, do you have any destinations? <laughs> Just round and round the Phoenix Park. Two but kilometer circles. The, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what it's like. But do you the, listen to music when you're cycling? Like, or do you just like your no. own silence? Just silence, yeah. I try to listen to podcasts and it's kind of all right, but the, the noise is like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, I find that when you take headphones out and you're cycling, you're like, oh, you're, you're kind of relieved. Yeah. You're going, oh, you know, that's lo lovely sound of the wind. And yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's a know, bit more, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's good. To, you know, if, you, if you're going to be in nature, be in nature. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, sound, like, yeah. Sound, like, sound, like, sound like my own dad to you. Totally. Yeah. What about you? Do you do any kind of um, yeah, cycling or exercise stuff? I, I used to. I used to do a little bit of a small bit of kickboxing training, and I used to do a bit of cycling. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Right. It's just a small bit. No, it wouldn't be much. But I bought a little, uh, a little self-standing bag which I put in the back garden. Yeah. Just for the last few weeks, just so I've uh, just something to do. You know what I mean? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A small little bit of running as well. I have. I used to do a bit of cycling, but I haven't, haven't done right. now. But uh, you, sure. you definitely need something to keep you going. Yeah. And have you been making any of uh, these videos that you've been doing? Was brilliant I did, stuff. I did, I did. Well, I did maybe a couple recent, like a few weeks ago, but I haven't since. I kind of, yeah. kind of jump at it, and then I kind of forget about it. And then if something, yeah. and I never sort of sit down to come up with a video. If something strikes you as funny, you just yes. do it straight away, and then just exactly just on. Like you don't yeah. sit down there trying to come up with a. I, I always find if you tr if you're trying to be funny, you never are. Yeah. You know what it, I mean? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just but it's, you know, it, 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 it's good to do it. Anyway, yeah. and some, something I tend to believe in is uh, just make the effort, you know, do yeah. something, even That's if it's a bit shit, because you've got to produce, you've got to get used to a ratio of, you know, maybe 60, 70% bad stuff and yeah. maybe 30, 20%, you know, good stuff, you know, so 
but yeah, you got to keep doing it. You know, I applaud people who want to at least try. You know, so. exactly. Hey, are you listening to any good uh, podcasts or anything? What What are you listening to, or what have you seen lately? Uh, I started getting into Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, oh, which, yeah, which is good. If, if, yeah, yeah. If you can get past his kind of, uh, you know, he's an American talking about history like this. Yeah, uh, but he's really uh, well read, and he will talk for like four or five hours. Yeah, so you'll just be going, "Holy shit, this has been going on a long time." It's but it's funny, brilliant. It? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can easily it's like the the Joe Rogan podcast or whatever. You're quite happy to spend three hours headphones in, especially if you're doing work that's kind of a uh, pedestrian enough. You know what I mean? If you're if you're yeah, yeah, just designing yeah. something or crafting something, it's actually lovely to have something in your ears yeah. to kind of. Oh, totally. Kind of, kind of, kind of churn you through the, the tedium of it. Like, you know what I mean? If it, if yeah, yeah, it definitely, is, so. definitely. Yeah, I, I like um, Adam Buxton as well, you know. Yeah, he's good. He's, uh, lots of good interviews and that, so, yeah. yeah. Sure. Joe Rogan sometimes, yeah. Sounds like such a guy selection, isn't it? Yeah. Hardcore history, Joe Rogan and Adam Buxton, you know. That's it. Quick, quick, think of a woman, quick. Hey, do you know what's, what's really good? Uh, Desert Island Discs. It goes all the yeah. way back to the 60s, and you get, I'd say you could be listening yes. to an interview between... Um, some fighter pilot from 1950s and their lives right. are just amazing you know what i mean and, and the old, even especially the, the really old stuff from the 40s or the 50s or whatever yeah. and the, the tunes it's really interesting to go yeah, back yeah, that yeah. far like the catalog Definitely, is just yeah. just insane you know so yeah Has, have they got any um kenneth williams on desert island Disc? is he on that he would be i'd imagine yeah some people yeah. might be on it a few times they've had such an expansive career you know so right right I there was um have you also read them uh, or heard uh, in the psychiatrist chair? No. With the with the Irish. Um, oh, damn! See, Adam Buxton actually referenced that as well. It's um, Anthony Clare, Irish uh, psychiatrist called Anthony Clare. No, I haven't heard of. And that. he interviews a lot of big people from the sixties, seventies, and eighties. You know? How many kids do you have? Two. Two, two girls. And what age group? Uh, nine and eleven. She just turned nine the other day. So uh, Elsa is nine and Roisin's eleven. Are they showing any sort of a veering towards art? No, not heavily. I mean, they're quite they're quite good. You know, yeah. um, I won't, you know, say who's doing better than the other, but um, yeah, they're pretty good. You know, uh, the main thing is to keep them happy about it rather than trying to turn them into little, you know, Leonardo's or something. You know, yeah, exactly, so yeah. as long as they they just enjoy it. I yeah, find that so. as well. My daughter, the last thing I want to do is show her how to draw anything because we just yeah. turn it into a run of the mill. I love the way I love the naivety and the way they see things. Like um, it's like that. Remember Monsters Inc. That uh, great Pixar yeah. film. All yeah. those characters were uh, based on kids' drawings that were submitted because the animator said we couldn't right. come up with a, a a lemon with a green dots. They said they just couldn't oh. arrive at the monster. But these are all based on the kids' drawings, so it's just right, it's right, right, that right. kind of gets knocked out of you as you get older, isn't it? Yeah, uh, there's there's one kind of qualification I put in there is like my daughters tend to like to draw too much of the same thing, if you know what mm. I mean. Yeah, like the same uh, girl with manga eyes and mm. you know fashion model type things. Yeah, and I'm trying to keep a hands off approach to it, but after a while you're like, come on, come on, can we can we try something else? Uh, so I discovered some videos by a Scottish illustrator called Marion Dushar. And she's brilliant and she's got some little online things uh, on Twitter and she'll show you how to draw a really basic bicycle or how to draw the, a head, you know, the proportions of the head. And it's not yeah. dry and boring. Yeah. And it just gives them a little, I think if you can kind of show them like a new way to draw a nose or the way the eyebrows will totally change a face yeah. or crazy hairstyles, you know. Yeah. Because I think even kids can get stuck in a rut, you know. They can do, yeah. Do you know they what it is? They can just repeat the same success, you know what I mean? That's what. Yeah, I read this podcast and it's called about the growth mindset okay? yeah and they were saying the worst thing you can do is tell your kid oh fucking brilliant you're a genius you're a picasso you know what i mean it's a bad thing to do apparently right because it kind of locks them into this fear of actually just doing the same thing again they don't want to do anything less yeah. than that but they say yes. if you encourage them and say that's really cool the way you're actually experimenting with this and doing that yeah. thing which is always kind of a always kind of praise the the exploration that they do as yeah, opposed to yeah. Telling them that's a definitively brilliant thing because it actually kind of makes them safe, makes them into a rut, and it actually, uh, it, like, funny, it actually generates a bit of fear, and they're afraid totally. of doing something that won't end up on the fridge. You know what I mean? So, yeah, completely, completely. I remember being about uh, fifteen or sixteen, and I was on this kind of summer art course for for kids from Scotland, and uh, they had a kind of a um, a show at the end of it, 
and I had I'd done this big watercolor thing, um, and one of the visiting artists kind of helped me with it a little bit, but it kind of won a minor prize, and uh, I realized that I was trying to replicate that same picture for about a year after that because mm. I wanted the same. What's that? Pat in the neck. Yeah. Pat in the yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even grown up people can get kind of needy and dependent on the praise aspect of things, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And so instead of just enjoying the buzz of it, you know. It's funny. A friend of mine was teaching uh, in our class to to elder pensioners. Okay, like the average age yeah. would have been maybe seventy to maybe seventy five, whatever. And the first yeah. question he asked was, "Hands up here who has both parents still alive?" And obviously, no one put up their hand. He says, "Right, none of these are going to end up in the fridge, so just relax." Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know people are very. They just want to do a lovely picture, but they're not. Because yeah. I remember one of the first uh, life drawing or one of the first painting classes we did in college, they made us get a bit of charcoal on a three foot bamboo stick and draw, draw something with your, you know, your less dominant hand. And yeah. then they turned yes. the thing over and got the next person to come on and finish your picture. So just to kind of separate you from the preciousness of my lovely yeah. finished thing, you know, so, so yeah. it's, good, it's good to find ways to loosen up. Well, that's it. I mean, people forget that, like, um, there's a much bigger pleasure to be had from the making of a thing than from the praise you'll get for having yeah. done the thing. That's um, it. You know, it really is. You, you need to go back to just. That's why I like. Uh, I like um, playing with the sand on the beach, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's going to get wrecked. You know, you need to say goodbye to it. However good it is, it's gone. And there's something lovely about that. I used to have a big, big thing about you know transient art like that. Yeah. And I'd love the way that you know it was going to get burned at the end of the day, or it was going to. It was all going to collapse or get washed away by the sea. That's that's good, yeah. you know. Just keep just keep on playing, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah we all get locked into uh, you know, uh, you know, praise and all that bullshit, you know. So yeah, no, like so, Instagram and stuff, you know. It's you so noisy out there anyway. You know what I mean? So if you're just looking for a few likes, it's not worth the effort. You know what I mean? Because I think your work is uh, extremely versatile. You can turn your hand oh, to anything. Yeah, I love looking at it, and especially the. The sort of old school techniques that you would adopt, you know, like the etchings and the lino yeah. yeah, yeah, nice to see that. I'll tell you why that happened, uh, at least partly why it happened. Um, because I was working as a storyboard artist for like many, many years, and you would draw pencils and you know, then you scan it in, and a yeah. lot of what you did was in Photoshop. So I became like a digital artist, and I had nothing to show for it, I, d I had no drawer full of finished bits of art you know yeah and uh, it was it was ridiculous and I, I realized that it was uh you know it was it was making me a bit pathetic and a bit sad you know so i i, I thought i need to get back to making stuff again i want to yeah. i want to and I, I i went on an etching course for 21 weeks at ncad and it was yeah. fantastic you know so suddenly you're dealing with materials like you know acid and copper plate and yeah and you know oil and stuff and it's it's so good you know and you get yeah. the smell and the process so get back to what we're saying, you're involved in processes again and, and you might get a beautiful result. But uh, it was that, it was the fact that you need to make stuff and, I, you know, tinfoil, you know what I mean? You can make stuff with anything, you yeah. know? You, you just got to play with, I sound, like a, I sound like some really dumb TV artist kind of, you know, hey guys, you know, <laughs> just use your dinner to make a portrait. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like that though. I like I like people making stuff with what they've got, you know, because yeah. there are. You no, know, you end up opening new ground that maybe it's somebody else hasn't looked to at. Get your hands off the off the Mac, isn't it? Definitely. Oh my God, yeah. Otherwise, the Mac's going to be half of the work that you produce. Do you know what I mean? I it's it's going to look like everyone else's work. It's like photography with the digital now. Like you could end up with a memory card with a thousand shots, but when it was back in the dark rooms, you had twenty eight frames, and you're looking around the perimeter of each one. You're just so yeah, you, you you just saw things so much with so much more effort. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, you really did, and it was a yeah. Good, yeah. good thing to go back to if you could revisit from time to time, just to sort of uh, shoot yeah, with that yeah. mentality or do any work with that mentality again. Just, uh, just yeah, it yeah. Analog, you know, has to be definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna keep on at it, keep at it. That's it. Yeah. I won't take too much more of your time. Uh, really appreciate no, you. Good chat. to talk to you, man. Yeah, I hope there wasn't too much. Shitology in there. <laughs> too late for that. And uh, listen, we'll we'll uh, chat soon anyway. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah.